Let's say if this is an atom, proton, neutron, electron are all embedded in it like these dots. They thought it was like that. Then by the time you came to high school, they wrote a different picture. They wrote one central circle which contains proton, neutron and electrons are going around like planets in different formats. But now they know it's completely wrong and we have always known it's completely wrong. That's why textbooks never ever interested me because when I look at it, it looked dumb. It's a very good thing that they called it the God particle. It seems somebody wanted to call it the goddamn particle. So they just put God particle and that's a very clever ploy, marketing ploy. You must be glad that uh, scientists are becoming market savvy. They've always been in a subtle way, now they're getting little overt. So, uh, you know for most people, their idea of science is just the new telephone model that's coming up. The next model of iPhone is their idea of science. All these people who never ever were interested in any kind of physics, now talking about particle physics world over, everybody is talking about particle physics, that's an achievement. <laughs> Breaking a proton and coming up with a boson, is that an achievement? That needs to be seen. But it's definitely an achievement that suddenly the whole world, at least the educated part of the world, is thinking particle physics, that's an achievement. That's a good achievement, at least people are thinking of science as not a way of milking the existence, not entirely, at least a little bit. They're willing to spend ten billion dollars just to know something, I like that. There is right now no technological use, but they're willing to spend ten billion dollars and thirty years just to know something. That sounds very spiritual to me. It do usually doesn't cost that much but <laughs> So, having achieved one thing, having made a social goal, scientifically, what does it mean? In yoga, we see it this way. There is… existence is like this. There is something called as sthula, sukshma, shunya, shiva. Stula means the gross existence, physicality is stula. Everything that you can see, everything that you can sense through five sense organs is considered stula. This can be analyzed with your intellect and understood and grasped and this is always made of, as we know today, of anu or atoms because it's physical in nature. It's a complete block of building block of existence is an atom and if it's made of an atom, once enough number of atoms are there, we can touch it, we can smell it, we can taste it, we can see it if it becomes big enough. Initially in a microscope, after that with our bare eyes, we could see it. But if it goes beyond the perception of the five senses, but still it is physical in nature, we call it sukshma. So when you enter into sukshma, it is still physical, but you are not able to grasp it. Do what you want, you cannot grasp it through five senses, nor can you analyze it through your intellect. That dimension, if you approach it, we call it Visheshagnan or Visheshagnana. That means an extraordinary knowledge. Gyan or Gnana means knowledge. Visheshagnan is extraordinary or significant knowledge. So Visheshagnan is referred to as Vigyan. The word Vigyan is being very loosely used today, but essentially it means this, those dimensions which cannot be perceived through five senses, if you perceive them, that is Vigyan. So today, science is entering those spaces because never ever is anybody going to see a Higgs boson. They are only going to see its footprint. Even now they only saw the footprint, they did not see a Higgs boson. But because they see the footprint, they believe he is there. Somebody has gone by, they left the footprints, we have not seen the man, but we know it's gone by. We go into the forest, we see the pug marks and we say, okay, there's be, there is a tiger. We haven't seen the tiger. In fact, in a tropical forest, it's very difficult to see a tiger. But we will see pug marks here and there, just like that, they saw the footprint. So they are entering Vishesh Gyan. If you go further, it will become Shunya. That means absolute emptiness. There, your intellect will be completely useless. Your senses will be completely useless because there is no physicality. Where there is no physicality, your sense organs and intellect will become absolutely redundant. 
if you go beyond shunya, there is something that we refer to as Shiva. When I say Shiva, don't imagine that calendar man from Shivakashi. Shiva means that which is not. If you touch that which is not, we have always seen it is not physical in nature. It is not physical in nature means it does not exist, but it is opaque. How can that be? It is not in the realm of your logical mind. Today, modern science believes the whole existence has to oblige to human logic, which is a very limited way of approaching life. The whole existence will not oblige to human logic. You think you can fit the whole existence into your head. No, no, your head fits into the existence. The existence will not fit into your head. They seem to have found something near to uh, what they are referring to as God particle. You know this? It's called the boson, which has a mass which is of a certain significance. If you try to look at the whole universe, you will not see anything. If you just look at an atom intensely enough and if the atom yields to you, then you know how the whole universe is made. Now they are no more talking about atom. They were talking about subatomic particles. Now they're not even talking about that. When two subatomic particles collide, not atoms, when two protons collide, something spills out of that. They want to see that. But when you say, I am on the path of yoga, you're not even interested in the tiny minuscule particle. You want to see the empty space which holds all this in place. That is their desire also, but they kind of given up on it. They want to see what is it that's holding all this together. But they don't have… they understand, they're sensible enough to understand, with these two eyes, with these senses, we can't see it. The only way is to go to the nearest point and see it. The nearest point is as far as a, away as Timbuktu, you understand? Right now, I don't know if you're interested in these things, but you must know these things because it's got a very direct relationship with yogic system. There was a time when scientists believed, let's say if this is an atom, big enough for you to see? Okay. If this is an atom, proton, neutron, electron are all embedded in it like these dots. They thought it was like that. Then by the time you came to high school, they wrote a different picture. They wrote one central circle, which contains proton, neutron and electrons are going around like planets in different formats. Yes, you've seen those pictures? But now they know it's completely wrong and we have always known it's completely wrong. That's why textbooks never ever interested me because when I look at it, it looked dumb. Today, suppose this is the size of the core of the atom. The electrons are, let's say, somewhere approximately a mile away. That's the kind of distance, you understand, within an atom. An atom is not like this. No human being has ever seen an atom. Do you know this? Forget about a proton, neutron, electron. Nobody has ever witnessed an atom. Even in a super electron microscope, you cannot see it. In that, there is a housing where proton, neutrons are there and the electrons are about a mile away in comparison, in proportion, I am saying. So what is the maximum substance in this? Emptiness, isn't it? We always told you, the yogic systems always insist that the microcosm and the macrocosm are made the same way. If you know this piece of life, you will know everything in the universe because that's how it is made. When they say, if you know the way these bosons behave and what they are, they're saying we will know the whole universe, the way the universe was made, we will understand. But you don't understand that you are also a bloody boson. In the cosmic space, you are just a boson. So you are as much as a Higgs boson in the universe. If you observe this, if you pay enough attention to this, you would know everything. But if you have not even paid attention to anything around you, paying attention to within you will be out of question.